Hello, my name is Dr. Rodriguez. I am a science professor. STEAM is an educational movement that combines science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. On the iSTEAM channel, we will introduce STEAM fields as access points for experiential learning, inquiry, and critical thinking. Hello, my name is Dr. Rodriguez. I am a science professor. Today's episode, do fish drink water? Osmosis and diffusion. Osmosis is a special kind of diffusion. During osmosis, there is a passive net movement of solvent or water molecules across a selectively permeable membrane, such as a cell membrane. Water will always move from a region of its high concentration or a hypotonic solution to a region of its lower concentration or hypertonic solution. It's important to note that selectively permeable membranes have tiny pores that only permit passage of small particles such as water molecules and glucose. If two solutions of different solute concentration or tonicity are separated by a selectively permeable membrane, osmosis will occur until equilibrium is attained, and both solutions contain equal concentration of solute. Isotonic solutions have an equal solute concentration, so water moves equally in both directions. Water in a cell press against the cell membrane and exert an osmotic pressure. We're going to investigate transport across a living membrane. The following materials are necessary. Measuring cup in milliliters, table salt or sodium chloride, weight scale in grams, two small plastic cups or glasses, a spoon, two or three potatoes, an apple corer. Alternatively, you can have an adult using a cutting board and knife. Knife, a dose of verbition is necessary. A metric ruler, pencil, timer or clock, paper towels, 200 milliliters of distilled water, and a marker. Procedure, use the marker to label two containers one and two. Add 100 milliliters of distilled water to each container. Weigh 5 grams of salt and add it to container 2. This is your 5% salinity solution. Mix the solution using the spoon until all the salt is dissolved. Prepare at least 4 potato cores or slices. Have an adult help you core or cut the potato into strips with the same dimensions. The potato pieces should be at least 10 millimeters thick and 50 millimeters long. Ensure each potato piece is the same size to the millimeter. Have an adult use a knife to trim as necessary. Measure the dimensions, length, and diameter or width of each potato strip in millimeters and write the information in the table below. Dry and weigh the potato strips in grams if you have a scale. On the table below, enter the starting measurements of length and diameter or width of each potato strip for every salt concentration, 0 grams and 5 grams of salt. Rinse the core using tap water. Select at least 4 potato sticks. Fill and describe their texture. Fill the potato strip with your fingers and try to bend them a little. How do they feel? Are they easy to bend? Describe them in the table. Place at least two potato sticks in each container. Make sure to completely cover the potato stick in container one with the still water and cover the potato stick in container two with the 5% solution of sodium chloride or salt. Start your 30 minute timer. Let the potato strip sit in the different solution undisturbed for the full 30 minutes. What do you think will happen to the strip in each container? After 30 minutes, remove all the potato strips out of the containers and place the zero gram strips on a paper towel label zero and the others on the paper towel label five. 
While doing that, feel the potato pieces again and try to bend them slightly. How do they feel? Are they easy or more difficult to bend than before? Can you observe any changes? Use the ruler to measure the exact length and diameter or width in millimeters of each of the potato strips and write the results in the table below. What did you notice about the potato strip measurements? Dry and weigh each piece and record their weights in the corresponding table. Repeat for the potato strip from the 5 grams container. Write your results in the table below. Use the Venn diagram below to compare and contrast the result. Explain your results. Are you a curious individual? If so, place the potato strips in the solution for a longer period of time. How do they look if you let them soak in different solutions for one hour? How about overnight? Record and explain any changes in texture of the potato sticks in the table below. In each explanation, you must refer to the tonicity of a solution in the potato cells. So now that you know what happened to a living organism, potatoes are composed of living cells, what do you think will happen to a fish in a salty environment or seawater, or a freshwater fish? Understanding osmosis will help you understand the initial question. Do fish drink water? The answer is yes and no, depending on the type of environment where the fish live. Living organisms are all composed of cells surrounded by a cell membrane. The cell membrane can allow water to pass through it. An organism body fluid must be the same salinity as the water they live in, or the organisms need to exert energy to either keep water in his body or keep water out. If an organism is less salty than the surrounding, water from the organism's body move out to increase its salinity. The organism will dehydrate if it doesn't actively drink water and get rid of excess salt. If an organism is more salty than the surrounding water, water moves into the organism's body and it will blow up. A marine fish salinity is only 18 parts per thousand, less salty than the average seawater, which is 35 parts per thousand. Marine fish lose water by osmosis to increase their salinity, but gain water by drinking water. However, seawater is too salty for it, so it secretes salt via the gills to preserve water and produce hardly any urine. On the other hand, the salinity of freshwater fish is higher than their environment. They gain water by osmosis, decreasing their salinity. Therefore, freshwater fish avoid drinking water. However, fresh water moves into the fish. So to get rid of the extra water, they produce copious amounts of urine. I hope this presentation was insightful. Please subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you enjoy learning about STEAM. Please also share this channel with someone you think can benefit from or will enjoy the presentation of the ice team channel. Hope to see you soon.